how I got into this industry is kind of odd. Uh, most people I've met in this industry do have a degree in viticulture, which is fine, uh, from multiple universities. Um, at that time, I did not know there was a degree in viticulture and enology, but that drive in me, I said, I, don't, I wanted to be outside, I wanted to be with people to learn from their experiences what they, what they know they want to teach down, that's what I wanted to do. As a vit tech, you kind of learn the, uh, what I learned was the basic stuff, uh, counting clusters, bud counting, et cetera, insect scouting. So that's a basis right there. And then when I got into the management programs at, at Chateau St. Michel, we uh, crew management and how to run a crew, how to be with the crew. And then from, from there, uh, working at a smaller winery out of Walla Walla, selling fruit. Each, each, each opportunity I've had, I've had to expand that and, each, and I've always looked back on my experiences from my previous jobs to help me propel myself in the current job. I enjoy the scientific side of it, chemistry side of it. I see the future of this industry too and we're seeing, starting to see that with GPS marking, GPS ripping, uh, GPS planting, harvesters, etc. Or crop estimation. Every year is different. Every, I mean, every, so every season is different. And that challenge is uh, I find that kind of fun, kind of it's a challenge for me. You might have one thing and it might change the next next six weeks. Um, you might have one number and then you have to change it. And that, in trying to get to the ultimate, say X, Y, Z, and it comes in A, B, and going back and figuring out what was wrong, I enjoyed that challenge. I mean, we're out there trying to produce the best crop possible for each site, all the way down to each block, and possibly even down to each row, because clients' uh, wants are different from everyone. Everyone's difference. Everyone wants something different. The big challenge, I think, it's across the industry personally, uh, is, is uh, labor, and then trying to uh, become more mechanized. So it is. We have a perfect example, actually. Uh, we have a Merlot block. It's an older Merlot block. Uh, we have 10-inch um, cross arms. We're gonna, we would like to machine pick it, but we can't. Uh, we have to go through there and um, change out the trail system, basically. We have to make shorter, uh, shorter cross arms or actually remove them. And then on top of that, we're gonna have to change our printing style because it's more of a sprawl. And now we're trying to make it more VSP, vertical shoot position, so it can pick easier, work cleaner. These newer vineyards are coming in that are designed for mechanization. They have it. <laughs> These older vineyards that have been planted for older, that's a big challenge coming in and changing a trellis system that's been in there for 20 plus years. Someone coming up, you have to get out there. And that benefit me. You know, you might see something in a book or in a TV show, but out in the, out in the field it might be 100% different and you need to be out there hands on. And that's how I gain my experience and I, it would benefit a younger, gener, a younger grower coming through the field. Getting out there, doing that shoot thinning, doing the, being out there with your crew. But also to learning GIS mapping. That's, a, that's a th something, um, I mean you could do, going out there and surveying a field. And some of these new sites that are coming in, you might have never planted five, 10 years ago, but now with the new technology, Heck yeah, we're planting it. <laughs> that, that's the cool thing about the wine industry too. Everyone has, you could taste two Merlots from the same side, but that person might have a different way to make it and you gotta keep that open mind versus the other person. You know, there's not one, just one way to go down the highway. This is the way how you do it. Great, great growing one-on-one, but you gotta, you know, it's, you gotta think outside the box.